Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome to another Pokemon character study. In case you're unfamiliar with this video series, in these studies I like to take a look at various characters throughout the Pokemon universe and talk about them and their many appearances in the franchise. From the anime, games, to even the manga, I look at a character's personality, their actions, their Pokemon team, and analyze and present everything I can find about and relating to a character. For today's character study, we'll be focusing on someone who I feel is oftentimes forgotten about and glossed over when talking about Pokemon's many champions. You always hear about Blue and Cynthia and Steven, but you almost never hear anybody mention or talk about Alder. While he isn't necessarily my favorite champion, I still find the amount of indifference he gets is a little bit undeserved. So I thought for today's study, we would go in depth and talk about the champion slash former champion of the Unova region, Alder. The best place to start before we get super in depth with all of his appearances is with just his general role in the franchise as well as the possible origins for his design and name. Alder's first appearance was in the Generation 5 games Pokemon Black and White, where he was the champion of the Unova region. Since then, he's also appeared in the sequel games Black 2 and White 2, where he's given up the position of champion, as well as most of the other Generation 5 related material out there, such as the Black and White seasons of the anime and the many Generation 5 related mangas. One key thing to note here is that he hasn't appeared at all outside of Generation 5, unless of course Sun and Moon changes that, but seeing as how those games haven't released as of the time I'm making this video, I'm just going off of what he's currently appeared in, which he hasn't been seen out of Gen 5. The reason I bring this up is that many champions appear in later generations than the one they first showed up in, such as Steven showing up in Generation 4 or Cynthia showing up in Generation 5. Alder is one of the few that doesn't, and I think him not showing up outside of his debut generation is possibly one of the reasons why people generally forget about him. There's a couple more ideas I have on why people are so meh on him, but I'll save my speculation on that for when we get more in depth and talk about his game version. As far as how Alder is generally shown in his various appearances, he's usually portrayed as somebody who can be rather energetic and loves Pokemon, but also has a more laid back and contemplative side too. After having some pretty badass champions who act not necessarily hastily, but never ponder all angles of life, Alder definitely comes off as pretty distinct as he does think about lots of different philosophical questions and goes on, as he puts it, spiritual journeys. Switching over to his name origin now, it's possible that it comes from a type of moth known as the Alder Moth, which could be a reference to his signature Pokemon Volcarona. It's also possible that it comes from the Alder Tree, whose leaves are generally eaten by various moths and butterflies, which once again might be referencing his signature Pokemon. His name definitely has some kind of connection to moths, and his Japanese name is no different, as his name, Adeku, references a plant which moth larvae are known to eat. Another possibility for his name origin comes from the word Alderman, which is a person that is voted or elected by others to join a council. In the games, Alder is actually chosen by the Pokemon League to be the champion, rather than earning the title the typical way by defeating the current champion. It's definitely one of the more interesting things about Alder, and I just thought I'd bring it up now rather than waiting for the game section, as Alderman is a possible basis for his name. Shifting over to the topic of Alder's design, it's obvious that it's meant to invoke a more nomadic and wanderer vibe. He's wearing a traveling poncho with very muted colors, and it seems that his clothes are very worn down and rugged, as if he's been traveling for a long time. Either that or he's being very stylish and bought frayed capris on purpose. This kind of traveler feeling he invokes is tied into his story in the games pretty well, as it's said that Alder journeys around the Unova region a lot. The reason he does this is actually kind of complicated, so let's switch now to the game version of Alder and focus exclusively on what this Alder is like, both in terms of his personality as well as things he's done and accomplished within the games. As I mentioned earlier, Alder has only appeared in the Generation 5 games Pokemon Black and White, as well as their sequels Black 2 and White 2. While he's only had these four game appearances, we actually learn quite a bit of info about him from them. Maybe not as much as some of the other champions, but we actually get to see a little bit into his personal philosophies, as well as learn about his past and early life. This is actually where I want to start when talking about the game version. I want to go over his early life and past that happened before the events of Generation 5, and then we'll dive into everything he did in the games. Everything I'm about to mention about Alder's early life was all said or mentioned during Pokemon Black and White or their sequels, but I'm just compiling it now so it's a little bit easier to focus on. Alright, let's take it back now. Alder grew up in Flockacy Town and was described as being almost the polar opposite of what he's like during the events of Black and White. In Black and White, he seems mostly mellow and chill with a couple moments where he gets fired up, but in his early years, he was described as being extremely energetic, excitable, and madly pursuing strength and power. In fact, his grandson Benga, who we'll talk about a little later, could possibly give us a glimpse at what Alder was like in his youth. The turning point for Alder was when his starter Pokemon, which has been said to be a Larvesta slash Volcarona, passed away due to an unknown illness. This caused Alder to not only change his outlook on life, not focusing blindly on becoming stronger, but also to wander around the Unova region for many years aimlessly in grief and contemplation. 
Eventually, after an unknown amount of time of Alder wandering around the region and presumably still training Pokemon with no clear goal in mind, he was contacted by the Pokemon League and asked to become the champion. This piece of information is left pretty vague, so we don't know if perhaps the previous champion chose Alder to be his replacement, or if the League in general had a vote and decided on him to be their champion, but regardless, it suggested that he didn't get the title the traditional way by beating a champion for it. One last thing to note about Alder before we get to the events of Pokemon Black and White is that he has a tendency to leave the Pokemon League in the hands of the Elite Four and roam around the Unova region as a wandering champion. It's mentioned multiple times that Alder may be shirking his responsibility by doing this, but as he explains at the end of Black and White, he wanders around the region to teach people in Pokemon that battling and getting strength isn't the most important thing in life. Alder has learned this firsthand when he and his starter madly pursued strength until it died, and it seems that he really just wants to teach and help people understand what he learned all those years ago. This gets us caught up to the present, and we can now talk about how Alder fits into the original Black and White's events, and then afterwards we'll go through his role in the sequels. In Pokemon Black and White, Alder first debuts on Route 5 where he's seen and joined a local festival until he recognizes Elisa who is guiding the player and Sharon to Driftvale City. He comes over to talk to you and unlike most champions, Alder is flat out revealed to be the Unova region champion during your first encounter with him. This is, so far, the only champion in the games to ever reveal that they're the region's champion before you face them at the Pokemon League. Sharon is taken back by this, wondering why the champion would be hanging around a small festival, to which Alder responds by calling out Sharon on his judgment and saying that he's on a voyage throughout the Unova region. Alder's statement doesn't make much sense at the time, but once you learn that he goes around the region teaching people about Pokemon, his line about being on a voyage makes a lot more sense. Eventually, the conversation gets onto the topic of Sharon's goal of wanting to become the strongest trainer in Unova, the champion, to which Alder ponders if that's really enough of a goal. He says that Charon's way of thinking about his goal of being the champion isn't wrong, but that there's more to life than just wanting to be the most powerful trainer. This really hits home when you consider Alder's early life and how he had, at one point in time, a goal very similar to Charon's. At this point, Alder asks the player and Charon to battle some pre-scores to gain further insight into what he's trying to say. After you utterly demolish the two in a battle, Alder makes the point that while some out there may chase after strength and getting stronger, there are others that just like and enjoy being with Pokemon. He says that when it comes to what a champion should be, people have differing opinions, such as how he apparently just enjoys being with Pokemon, while Sharon believes being strong is what makes a true champion. With all this food for thought, he leaves the player and isn't seen again until you're heading through Twist Mountain. He observes you and Sharon having a battle with one another, and once again proposes Sharon with a question. What will he do after becoming strong? After Sharon responds by saying that he doesn't know what he'll do with all his power, but just wants to prove he's really living by getting strong, Alder ponders that Sharon reminds him of Marshall of the Elite Four, who is a fighting type expert and seemingly has a similar idea on strength. It's also worth noting that Marshall considers himself Alder's apprentice, and during the few occasions you get to speak with Marshall, he mentions that he is training with Alder to become stronger. After talking with the player and Sharon, Alder gives you the HM for Surf and says his goodbyes, leaving the player and Sharon to go about their journeys. He next shows up much later on at the outskirts of Dragon Spiral Tower. He says that he saw the energy from the legendary Pokemon that was awakened, which is either Zekrom in Pokemon Black or Reshiram in Pokemon White. Alder says that they can't let the other legendary Unova Dragon fall into Team Plasma's hands, and has an idea where the other Dragon Stone containing the opposite legendary of whatever game you're playing might be. He then departs for the Relic Castle, which is where he believes the other Dragon to be, and Sharon follows him. Once you arrive at the Relic Castle and fight your way through Team Plasma's grunts, you'll reach the bottom and find Alder confronting the Team Plasma Sage Getsis. Lots of harsh words are flowing around, such as Getsis bringing up Alder's deceased starter, as well as saying that N will use the power of the Legendary Dragon to take the title of champion by force, and that Alder will assuredly lose against him. Alder says that he won't lose and that he's going to fight for all of the trainers out there that love their Pokemon and all the Pokemon that love their trainers. He contemplates returning to the Pokemon League and waiting for his inevitable showdown against N, but says that something needs to be done about the other Dragonstone which Team Plasma is looking for. After going outside the Relic Castle, the player's cross transceiver starts ringing and Professor Juniper is on the line, urging the player to come to the museum in Nakreen City as soon as possible. Alder, curious as to what's happening at the museum, says he'll go on ahead and check it out. Once you arrive at the museum, you'll find a lot of people waiting outside, among them is Alder. It would appear that they were able to track down the other Dragonstone before Team Plasma did. Before they give you the stone, Alder mentions that it's a huge responsibility, and that if you take it, you'll be the one to battle N if he fails. After agreeing, Alder gives you the Dragonstone and advises the player to go to Opelucid City and speak with the Dragon-type gym leader of the town who might know how to awaken the legendary Pokemon within. 
When you go to Opelousa City, you meet up again with Alder and quietly listen in on Getsus' speech to the residents of the town, to which you can clearly see Alder is disapproving of. After Getsus leaves, the player and Alder meet up with Drayden and Iris, and Alder requests to learn more about Unova's legendary dragon Pokémon. After talking for a little bit, Alder finally decides to return to the Pokémon League and beat N, showing him that people and Pokémon are meant to live together. Okay, we're finally at the moment I personally feel is what made people a little more neutral on Alder as a champion. When you finally battle through the Elite Four and make it to the Champions Room, you find that N and Alder are both there, except there's one problem. Alder was defeated by N just moments prior to your arrival. It's here that N talks about how Alder lost his starter Pokémon and wandered aimlessly, which is probably why he wasn't at his full power for the battle. N summons his castle and leaves the player, waiting for your inevitable final showdown, while Alder, who is a little bit shocked and aggravated that he lost to N, asks the player to go put a stop to him for the sake of people and Pokémon alike. This event right here, with N defeating Alder and becoming the champion, is what I feel kind of makes Alder less cool and memorable for a lot of people. It makes N seem really awesome, like insanely cool actually, but for as amazing as it makes N look, it also takes away from Alder at the same time. All throughout the game, you know that Alder is the champion and you presume him to be strong, but when you finally see him at the league and the N has defeated him, it really makes him look weaker and less impressive than he might have normally. What's also kind of a blow to Alder is that if you want to properly battle with him, you have to come back to the Pokemon League after Team Plasma has been taken care of and beaten. This is so far the only champion of the games that you don't get to battle your first time through the League, and I think that definitely made an impact on people. Alright, getting back to what he does in the games. After the players defeated N in N's castle, Alder shows up while Getsis is revealing that he was the mastermind behind everything. Once the players defeated Getsis, Alder asks N if he still thinks Pokemon and people should be separated. N is still very unclear about everything, and Alder says that even though they had opposing views, that every argument has two sides and no point of view is always in the right. He and Sharon then escort Getsis out of the castle. At this point, there's only two other places you can find and interact with Alder at in the original black and white. The first is Celestial Tower, where you'll find Alder paying his respects to his deceased starter. He talks a little bit about it, saying it was courageous, noble, and kind, and also mentions that they were obsessed with becoming stronger. He then goes on to say that strength isn't something that remains unchanged forever, and that he found the joy of being with Pokémon to be the real thing to focus on. This is why he roams all around Unova and was seen enjoying a festival. He wants to spread the word and show people that being with and enjoying Pokémon is one of the best things you can do. The final place you encounter Alder at in black and white is at the Pokémon League, if you go through it again after Team Plasma has been beaten. Alder will thank you for helping put a stop to Team Plasma and N, and will accept your challenge for the title of Champion. Alder's team consists of an Excelgore, Bufalant, Dredigan, Vanillux, Escavalier, and his signature Pokémon Volcarona. After defeating him, he is overjoyed and takes the player to the Hall of Fame, which is the last thing he does in Pokémon Black and White. Before we move on to Black 2 and White 2, there's actually some Alder-related info to talk about which happens in between these two sets of games. Using the memory link in Black 2 and White 2, you can see flashbacks of things that happened after the original Black and White, but before the sequels. One of these flashbacks shows Alder training with Bryson in Flockacy Town. Marshall shows up, and the trio starts talking about Team Plasma's effect on the region, and how Bryson wants to get back into acting to hopefully help ease people's worries. While the conversation drifted towards strength and how sometimes you forget the reason you want to be stronger in the first place, Alder shares an important decision that he's made, which is that he's going to resign as champion. He says that the world is still shaken in uncertainty because of Team Plasma, and he wants to travel around and show people what it means to live alongside Pokémon. This leads us into the events of Black 2 and White 2 now. These games take place two years after the events of the original Black and White, and Alder is now retired from being the Unova Region Champion, with the Dragon-type Master Iris taking up the mantle. Even though he's not the champion, Alder still has a somewhat larger presence in the games, and acts more like a helpful guide to the player. When you first meet him on Route 19, he introduces himself as just a trainer with a keen interest in the world, and says that his goal is to remind people how great Pokémon are. He notices right away that you aren't an experienced trainer, as this is the first route you go on in Black 2 and White 2, and decides to bring you to his home in Flockacy Town to give you some training advice. Before going inside to be trained, Alder suggests that you go find Hugh and give him one of your two town maps. After doing so, you'll find Alder inside his home, which is almost set up like a pseudo-trainer school. He asks you to battle some school kids to help teach them that Pokémon battles are meant to be fun, and after demolishing them in battle, he also informs the player about type advantages, but does comment that Pokémon type matchups don't determine everything in a battle. 
After this, he advises the player to go to the Aspersia City Gym and test how strong you've become. On your way back to your hometown, Alder pops up briefly to give the player some Orin Berries and also encourages them to do their best and try and challenge stronger and stronger trainers alongside your Pokemon to grow your bond together. This is, as crazy as it sounds, the last appearance that Alder makes before the player becomes champion. Once you've taken down Iris at the Pokemon League and become champion yourself, if you return to Alder's house in Flockacy Town, you can challenge him to a battle. His Pokemon team is somewhat similar to his team from the original Black and White, but there are a few changes. He has an Excelgore, a Scavalier, Bufalant, Conkeldur, Braviary, and a signature Pokemon Volcarona. After you defeat him, he seems exhilarated, saying that a fresh wind blew through his heart. Unfortunately, this wind blowing is cut short as his grandson Benga, who is the only relative of Alders that's seen in the games, bursts through the door. He mentions the Black Tower if you're playing Black 2, or the White Tree Hollow if you're playing White 2, and it's extremely energetic. Alder even comments on this, saying that he's pretty lively, even for my grandson. After Benga leaves, Alder suggests that the player go and challenge either the Black Tower or White Tree Hollow and see if they can make it to where Benga is. There's one final appearance Alder makes in these games, and that is at the Pokemon World Tournament in the Champions League. He uses a team of many different types, which consists of its Volcarona, a Conkodur, Reuniclus, Crocodile, Chandelure, and Braviary. Aside from him only using Pokemon from Generation 5, his team is meant to represent the Unova Elite Four, with Chandelure representing Chantel, Conkodur for Marshall, Crocodile for Grimsley, and Reuniclus for Caitlyn. If you're able to beat him, then he congratulates you and says that the ones who change the world are always the one who pursue their dreams. And there we go! That's what Alder is like in the games. To summarize it a little bit, I think he's actually pretty interesting and has a more laid-back and contemplative side that we don't see much of in Champions. I definitely understand why many people forget about him or put him at the bottom of favorite champions lists, but I feel that it might be a little bit undeserved. I totally get that people feel he was one of the weaker champions battle-wise, but looking past that, he has a great backstory and philosophy. All he really wants to do is spread the idea that Pokemon are meant to live alongside humans and that strength isn't always the right thing to wildly pursue. His champion battle and Pokemon team may be easy and forgettable, but I've always found his personality and actions in the games to be pretty interesting and memorable. Normally, at this point, we talk about a character's cards in the trading card game, but surprisingly, Alder hasn't had a single card. It might seem a little weird for a champion to not have any cards related to them, but this is actually a relatively common occurrence in the card game, and there's been a few champions that don't have any cards. Let's instead switch over to the anime section and take a look at Alder's appearances in animated form. I've got to say really quickly that as I'm making this video, the new Pokemon Generations anime episodes are currently being released every week. It's possible that Alder may show up in some form in one of the episodes, but so far he has yet to make an appearance. Just know that if he does show up, I had no idea and hopefully he's cool. If he doesn't show up, just disregard what I just said. So assuming he doesn't show up in Generations, Alder has only appeared in the mainline anime with Ash and is somewhat similar to his black and white game appearance. He's the champion of Unova and shows up in various places around the region where Ash bumps into him. There are a handful of differences from his game version though, such as this Alder having no part in helping take down Team Plasma as well as a Brock-like love for women, so let's take a deeper, more comprehensive look at this incarnation. Alder first appears not in person, but instead in a flashback to Tripp's childhood in Black and White Episode 31, Ash and Tripp's Third Battle. In the flashback, Alder is shown battling a trainer with his Bufalant as Tripp watches in amazement. It's worth knowing that in the anime, the only Pokemon that's confirmed to be on Alder's team is his Bufalant. I have no doubt that he has other Pokemon, but the only one he uses in all of his appearances is his Bufalant. After winning the battle, Alder approaches a young Trip and asks him what his goal is, to which he replies that he wants to be the champion. Alder is surprised by this, but is also rather impressed and says that Trip should battle a lot so he can become strong, and when he does, he'll be waiting to battle him someday. Trip says that he'll battle every day so he can be strong enough to challenge Alder and seals the promise with a handshake. It would appear that Alder actually inspired Trip to keep battling and is one of the big reasons why he works and trains so hard in the present. After this, Alder's official appearance in person, not flashback, was in Black and White Episode 52, Ash vs. The Champion. He has, honestly, what I think might be the best introduction of a champion in the anime, where Alder is sitting on Officer Jenny's motorcycle playing with a herdier. She demands Alder to leave, to which he replies, I will, but only if you have lunch with me. This angers Officer Jenny, and she threatens to arrest him, which causes Alder to run away. For as much as I enjoy this scene with Alder, it highlights what I believe to be one of the biggest differences between the game and anime Alders, which is that this Alder is generally portrayed a little more humorously and more like comic relief at times. 
Don't get me wrong, there's still moments where he resembles the game version's more contemplative and serious personality, but this alter also has moments where he's flirting with Officer Jenny's, Nurse Joy's, and even Cynthia. Another example of anime alter's general lightheartedness is when he and Ash are having a battle a short time later in the episode. Ash and Trip both wanted to battle Alder, but Trip lets Ash go first because he's confident that Alder will thoroughly stomp Ash. After Alder's Buffalon takes multiple hits from Pikachu with Alder doing nothing, it's shown that Alder actually fell asleep while standing up. Once he's been woken up and given an excuse that he'd been walking non-stop earlier and was super tired, he's then ready to truly battle. His Buffalon is still embarrassed because of them, and Alder tries to get it to battle by slapping it on the butt. This causes it to charge in a frenzy, and in a strange twist of events, it charges right into Alder, bashing him against a tree. The whole scene is pretty comical, and even though I think it's funny, it does, once again, paint Alder in a different light than how he's shown in the games. Now, I'm not saying that the Alder in the games was always solemn and thinking about life's greatest mysteries. In fact, you could probably argue that he was similarly lighthearted like the anime, but I feel that the anime version plays him up maybe a little bit too comedically in his few appearances. That being said, there's still some more serious moments with the anime Alder that I want to talk about that do make me take him a little bit more seriously. After being flung against the tree, Alder concedes defeat and says that he's done battling for the day, even though his Buffalon is still in fighting condition. Trip is pretty annoyed by this, but asks Alder a question about strength and getting stronger, and brings up what Alder said all those years ago to him about battling more and more people to become stronger, and that strength is the most important thing. Alder is confused by this, even saying, did I really say that back then? And says to Trip that battling isn't the most important thing. Trip is shocked by this and decides to leave, having no interest in battling Alder at the moment anymore, and says that he'll hold true to the path he believes in. Alder doesn't pick up on Trip's mood shift and says goodbye, telling him that it helps to enjoy life. Taking a brief step back for a moment, we see that even though Alder has moments of comedy relief and being pretty laid back, there's also traces of the game version's mantra on battling and strength that we can see too. Alder telling Trip in the present that battling isn't the most important thing, when in the past he did believe that to be important, is a parallel to the games where he had that kind of progression from his youth. It's unknown if perhaps one of the anime Alder's Pokemon died in the past, which caused him to change his beliefs, or if he just naturally came to the idea, but regardless it is a philosophy that he shares with the game version, even if it is isn't as complexly stated in the anime. After Trip leaves, Alder and Ash's group go to the Pokemon Center to get food until a Nurse Joy comes in and says that a Gigalith is stampeding in a nearby area wreaking havoc. Alder becomes the hero and champion we all know he can be here, and after getting tossed into a pole confronting the monster once, successfully catches it with his bare hands, flips it over, and removes a nail that had got caught in the Gigalith's foot. This is a great example of how the anime Alder loves Pokemon and wants to help them whenever he can. The final appearance Alder makes in the anime is during the Pokemon World Tournament Junior Cup. Alongside flirting with Cynthia, which is probably the main reason he's there, he's also one of the hosts of the tournament, and whoever wins gets an opportunity to battle him. Trip wins the tournament and finally gets his chance to battle Alder. While his superior is shown to be strong, it's no match for Alder and his Buffalant, and he gets totally beaten down. Alder talks to Trip a little bit after the battle, and the two come to an understanding with one another. As the tournament is ending, Alder says his goodbyes to everyone and isn't seen in any anime episodes after this. I feel like I've already summarized what this Alder is like pretty well with him having a slightly more lighthearted and comedy approach than his other counterparts, but at the same time, there's remnants of the serious and rational nature that the games portray Alder with too. There's also a definite love of Pokemon that this Alder shows as well. I don't dislike this Alder, which I might have come off as feeling like, I just think he's one of the more divergent counterparts in regards to the game version. We finally arrived at the final versions of Alder to talk about in this video. The manga versions. Let's take a look at the manga Alders and how they stack up and compare to his other portrayals. Alder has had quite a few manga versions, and in this study I'm only going to be talking about two of them. The Pocket Monsters BW, the Heroes of Fire and Thunder version, and of course the Pokemon Adventures slash Pokemon Special version. Most of his manga versions outside of these two have him in smaller roles, more in line with a cameo, and I want to focus on these two because he has a bigger presence in them that we can talk more in depth about. Starting with the Pocket Monsters BW Heroes of Fire and Thunder manga, this Alder might be the most different out of all the Alders in this video. I know I made a slightly big deal about the anime Alder being different, but this manga Alder actually has multiple personalities and can either be calm and rational, or crazy and psychotic. That's definitely a lot different than an Alder who falls asleep during a battle. Getting into the story of this manga a little bit, Alder is the champion of the Unova region and helps the protagonist Shin at various points on his journey. The biggest thing he does is he leads Shin to the Relic Castle in search of the Lightstone, which Alder thinks that Shin should have. 
After they find the stone, Alder turns on Shin and claims the stone for himself, while also using his Volcarona to attack and imprison him. When Shin is able to break through Alder's trap and touch the Lightstone, Alder reverts back to his nicer and more rational self, and says that this was all a trial suggested by N to get the Reshiram within the Lightstone to accept him as a hero. Alder then bids farewell to Shin and promises to battle him again someday. That's just a very brief overview of what Alder is like in this manga, but I think you kind of get the gist of his role as sort of a helpful side character as well as kind of an antagonist, then back to a good guy. Switching over to the other and last manga counterpart we'll be talking about, we come to the Pokemon Adventures Alder, who's more in line with most other portrayals of him in the fact that he loves Pokemon, but also deviates from the others in a lot of the actions and things that he does. Alder first appears in the black and white chapter in Nimbasa City where he and Marshall of the Elite Four were asked by the mayor to help test the battle subway. It's worth mentioning that Marshall and Alder's relationship is similar to the games and how Marshall considers Alder to be his instructor and mentor. The two have a practice battle against each other where we get to see Alder's Excelgor until Alder decides to take a break and go play with some Pokemon because the mayor has yet to arrive. It's here we get a glimpse of what this Alder is like when we see him playing and having fun with not just his own Pokemon, but random wild Pokemon that approached him too. It doesn't matter to him if they're wild or not, he just loves and enjoys being with Pokemon. This is something that most Alders have in common, and it's nice to see it represented with this version so well. The next day, Alder goes back to the battle subway and is dismayed to find that the mayor already arrived and went while Alder was out playing with Pokemon. Black and White lightly make fun of him for slacking off, but he claims that he was going on an important voyage, which coincidentally looked like he was just having fun with Pokemon. After this, we don't see Alder until much later on at Route 6 where he and N have their final battle. This differs from the games where they have their showdown at the Pokemon League, but in Pokemon Adventures, it's just on a route. But there's still a lot of intensity in the air. We get to see all of Alder's manga team here, which consists of his Bufalant, Excelgor, Escavalier, and Vanillux. He's not shown to have a Volcarona, however, which I do find to be a little weird considering it's well known as the signature Pokemon, and this Alder is, more or less, the most similar to the games as far as his known team goes. Unfortunately, even though Alder has passion and confidence in his battling ability, he is defeated by N, who didn't even have to use his Zekrom. After Alder's defeat, he disappeared and left the Pokemon League to be handled by the Elite Four, while Team Plasma ultimately used N's victory over him to justify their goal and get more people to agree with them. Since his defeat, Alder hasn't been seen at all in the Pokemon Adventures manga. It's possible he may show up in the Black and White 2 Pokemon Adventures chapters, but so far, nothing has hinted at him making an appearance. And with that, we finish taking a look at not just Alder in the manga, but Alder throughout the Pokemon franchise. I know that people say he's the lamest champion and call him unmemorable, but I think people may be too hard on him. Yeah, his team isn't really that great, and he did get overshadowed by N at the end of Black and White, but we really haven't had a Pokemon champion quite like Alder when you think about it. His love of Pokemon is, in my opinion, almost unmatched by other champions. I'm not saying the other champions don't like Pokemon, but Alder had a life-changing experience when his starter died, which I think made him appreciate Pokemon much more than most people. So much so that he even dedicated his life to teaching and helping people understand that Pokemon are awesome and that chasing after strength isn't always the way to go. His various counterparts can be pretty different from each other, but they all usually keep that aspect about him in some form, which only goes to show how significant loving Pokemon is to Alder's character. Anyways, what do you guys think of Alder? Do you like him and think he's underrated? Maybe you dislike him and think he truly has been the worst champion, both in battling ability and character. Feel free to let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and my heart jumps for joy! Well then, prepare yourself for battle! Kia! Hey, thanks so much for watching this character stay. So this one took forever to make, my throat is still on fire, but once again, thanks so much for watching, and as always, any feedback you guys can give me, like, was this video too long, was it too short, is greatly appreciated by me, because I'm really trying to make these the best that they can be. The other thing I wanted to mention really quickly at the end here is that I'm actually, for future character stays, going to be having a vote, so you guys can actually vote on what character you'd like to see a character study on next. Hopefully I have some options up on the screen right now, hopefully I didn't forget. And you can just vote in the comments for which one of these you'd like to see a character study on next. Now if you don't like any of these characters, don't worry, you can still suggest characters in the comments, and if enough people suggest one of those characters, I will definitely put them on a vote for a future character study. So, keep that in mind. Once again, thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you guys later.